Things are getting a little bumpy for the Miami Hurricanes in the transfer portal, but honestly, I wouldn't stress too much. Here's why. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Sunday. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers who make Locked on Canes your first listen each and every day. Free Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you get your pods and free on YouTube. And we're with you six, if not seven days a week. So I hear it. I'm on Canes Twitter. I talk to a lot of you guys on our subtext platform. Frustration is kicking in with Canes fans not having landed any of your targets in this transfer portal window. It's been very slow with incoming transfers, slow to develop with some of the players you've been targeting and who have visited. I do want to remind you that even though today, April 30th, is the deadline for players to enter the portal, it's not the deadline to pick a destination. You can really take it up until practically fall camp to commit to the school of your choice. Not saying most players would wait that long, but the academic enrollment deadlines are usually the deadlines to pick your school. So a lot of the players that Miami is going after, the battles can continue into the month of May. Now, I'm not telling you everything's perfect, okay? Because there's a couple of players that I've been looking at closely in the last couple of weeks that I thought maybe were slam dunks who maybe aren't slam dunks. I want to start with Xavier Henderson, the wide receiver from Florida, with what's going on there. There seems to be at least a little bit of concern, some concern here that Miami might be fading a little bit in the recruitment of the Florida Gators transfer wide receiver, who I really want. Um, He visited Miami last week unofficially. Um, I felt very, very confident heading into that visit. And it's not to say I've I've lost all my confidence. Henderson could still end up a Miami Hurricane, but I was really hoping Miami would get a commitment from him coming out of that visit midweek. uh, It didn't happen despite the feeling at the time, and it wasn't just from me. The feeling from others was that Miami was really in the driver's seat. And yet for the past several days, it's been radio silence. Now, one of the reasons why I tell people not to panic too much about this one is uh, I have been told by people who are more familiar with Henderson's situation that his family is especially quiet and private about their process, right? Every recruit, every portal player does it differently. Some have the more vocal entourages and they're all over social media talking about everything. I don't think Hendo is that way, so that's part of the reason why I think Miami fans are starting to get a little bit worried because he's taking his time here. But at the same time, uh, I also suspect that others might be emerging the longer this goes. I know Louisville has been at play with him before, so maybe a school like that. I've, I've seen someone mention potentially Cincinnati becoming a player here. So Xavier Henderson, obviously this is one of those things where Miami seems to be in a big time lead. So the longer this goes, the more you wonder. Uh, And also, I know that Hurricanes fans especially get frustrated about wide receiver targets because, yeah, Miami had a tough time in the December, January transfer window landing wide receiver targets. They swung and missed on a number of guys. So it almost feels like there's a wide receiver curse in the transfer portal. Hopefully Henderson ends up being the guy. I don't know how much of the time that he's taking. I don't know how much of it is NIL related or if he's just taking his time to make up his mind. Uh, It is my feeling that Miami is still very interested. So it's not like I don't think Miami has pulled back on him. And remember, he's a Miami Columbus alum. So hopefully the Cristobal, Mirabal, Lonzo Highsmith connection can hopefully close that deal there. Uh, And, you know, I want Xavier Henderson at Miami so badly. Listen, I know that he wasn't a first-team All-American receiver last year, but he did put up pretty decent numbers in a virtually non-existent passing game in Florida last year. But I crave his bona fide track speed because that's something Hendo brings to the table. He's got some speed and explosiveness that is not prevalent enough on Miami's roster, and I think he's got potential for a breakout year this year. So I hope Miami can win out there. Now, if things may be becoming just a little bit more concerning on how long it's taking with Xavier Henderson, 
it's not like Miami's putting all their eggs in his basket because there is at least one other prominent wide receiver target out there, uh, and I think Miami would like to get them both. So it's not like, hey, if we don't get this guy, here's plan B. I think that they are both plans A, plans A1 and, and A2, or 1A and 1B, however you want to characterize that, because Miami also really likes a wide receiver out of UTSA who's hit the portal, Zachary Franklin, six foot one, 185 pounds. This guy is a two-time first-team all-conference USA receiver, and I know Conference USA, it's not Power Vibe, it's not SEC, but you know we say this sometimes about some of these guys that enter the portal from Conference USA type of programs. Zakari Franklin, he is one of those that is ready to make a Power 5 jump, and he wants to try to impress more NFL scouts with bigger competition before he tries to make a jump to the league. And this guy, Zakari Franklin, he is a stud, at least at the Conference USA level. Hopefully he can carry that into the Power 5. In 2022, that's last season, Zakari Franklin at UTSA caught 93 passes for 1,137 yards, 15 touchdowns setting all kinds of records at UTSA. They've never had a receiver like him before. In 2021, he caught 81 passes for over 1,000 yards, I think 1,027, and 12 touchdowns. So this young man has scored 27 receiving touchdowns and well over 2,000 receiving yards over the past two years. He could help Miami get better and deeper at wide receiver, and I think he's good enough to even compete for a starting job on the outside. I don't know for sure if he would take Colby Young or Jacoby George's job, but quality depth and can definitely compete for one of those spots if he does wind up at Miami. This is someone Miami is interested in. Uh, Zachary Franklin, a couple of the pros on him. He's known as an excellent route runner, very good hands, very good vision, a threat to make plays in the open field. He's got that vision to hit the right holes. Uh, he's also a strong blocker uh, who can help your running game a bit on the cons side of things. He doesn't have that pure breakout speed like a guy like Xavier Henderson does. He doesn't have that bona fide track speed. I was also reading on one of his scouting reports that Franklin is not known for being great at breaking tackles. He's not that big. I mean, 6'185 pounds-ish. He's not like a tackle breaking machine. Uh, so I think there's probably more pros than cons with him. And this guy has put up really, really big numbers at the Conference USA level. So definitely an interesting option for Miami if they can make some progress there. Now, there's going to be a theme here for the next several months, right? In both the transfer portal and in 2024 recruiting, right? I know you guys all get hyped up for the recruiting battles Miami has with Florida. Had a lot of those last year. With Florida State, there's a lot of those brewing this year. But let me tell you, when it comes to recruiting and transfer portal, the school who's really a thorn in our side, Ohio State. There's a couple of ongoing battles between Miami and Ohio State I want to talk about when we come back. We're only getting started here on Locked on Canes. Oh, man, I'm only getting started this weekend with FanDuel. <laughs> I've got a game one today between the Miami Heat and New York Knicks. And I've got a game seven tonight between the Florida Panthers and Boston Bruins. This is what FanDuel was made for. Make a fast break to FanDuel during these NBA playoffs because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So, guys, I'm looking at Heat Knicks tonight. Heat are four-point underdogs. I've done pretty well this postseason. Heat have been covering a lot of spreads, guys. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. And for the everydayers, we're going to have a big week coming up. John Garcia Jr. is going to talk recruiting with us. Larry Bluestein, Brian Smith. We're going to try to get some of Miami's class of 2024 commits on the show. Again, we had Judd Anderson last week, which was a huge success. The 2024 quarterback commit was awesome, and I appreciate all the love you guys gave for that interview because I had a great time 
talking to him. So uh, Miami and Ohio State are engaged in some battles here. Uh, Ohio State got, a, I, I think, a, a pretty important victory for them last night. Hate to say it, and I'm not even talking about Jeremiah Smith, who I know Miami would love to flip, but I think the five-star receiver is pretty solid for the Buckeyes. We talked on the show last week about Miami being in the top five for four-star running back Jordan Lyle out of St. Thomas Aquinas and Miami being in a very heavy hitter top five, Florida State, Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State also in that mix. Well, last night, Jordan Lyle verbally committed to the Ohio State Buckeyes. So um, this could be one of those. Obviously, you know, Mario Cristobal doesn't give up on anybody in late April, early May. You know, same thing with Jeremiah Smith. He's going to keep recruiting these guys. But uh, that, that, that was uh, – I, I know Ohio State was really looking for a running back in this class and somebody of his caliber. So somebody who had Miami in their finalists and is from down here, St. Thomas Aquinas, did commit to Ohio State last night. Ohio State does very well with South Florida players. I don't have to tell you that. Um so, you know, other plans at running back. Now, Miami already does have one committed who I really like. Different type of player from Lyle. So I think they could have been a, a good combination, kind of the way that Mark Fletcher and Chris Johnson are just a great combination because you have the bigger power, complete back, and the speedster burner. And in this class, Chris Wheatley Humphrey, who is already committed to Miami and I love out of South Broward, he is that speedster, kind of like a Chris Johnson and Jordan Lyle could have complimented him very well. So Miami does have Chris Wheatley Humphrey committed. Uh, the Hurricanes, as far as like big time targets, there's a lot that has to develop here over the next couple of months. The Hurricanes are in the mix for Jarrett Gibson, four star back from IMG Academy. I'm sure his IMG teammates, former teammates who are on Miami now are in his ear. But Gibson does appear to be a, a Texas lean at this moment. I don't know if he plans to announce anytime soon, but Miami's got to gain ground against the likes of Texas and the other Florida schools are also involved with, uh, with Jarrett Gibson. So there does need to be some work done there. So not only did you have Jordan Lyle committing to Ohio state in the class of 2024, um, there seems to be out of the Ohio state side, some optimism for the Buckeyes to land defensive tackle Tywon Malone in the transfer portal. I bring it up because Malone is a Miami target and an important one because um, I've been saying it for weeks. I think uh, probably still the biggest need for Miami in the transfer portal is uh, the interior defensive line. I think adding a solid proven defensive tackle like Malone, who Miami does like, is important. Uh, but Taiwan Malone, he's visiting Ohio State this weekend. I think at the time I record this, that visit is still going on. So the way that I look at this is, I think the next 24 hours are going to be very telling that if Malone comes out of that Ohio State visit announcing a commitment, he's in the portal. If he announces a commitment sometime tonight or tomorrow to Ohio State, um, I think that's what they're hoping for up there in Columbus. But if tonight, tomorrow goes by no commitment, then I'm going to assume his recruitment is still open and Miami still has a shot here. So I'm going to be I'm going to be on high alert for about the next 24, 36 hours on Taiwan Malone to see what happens there. Now, regardless of what happens with Malone, I really hope Miami lands another one of their defensive tackle targets, and that's Kiwi Rose out of Louisiana Tech. Another guy, I, I said this with, uh, with the receiver we spoke about from UTSA, ready to make the power five jump. So is Kiwi Rose. Six foot three, 303 pound defensive tackle. He's got the girth to plug the running lanes, but he also generates a ton of pressure from the interior. Uh, I like Kiwi Rose a lot, and this is someone who I do not think would look out of place at all in the ACC and could help Miami's defensive line get better. Yeah, I think he's heading into his final year of eligibility, if I'm not mistaken, so this would not be a long-term fix, but that's okay, right? Because, you know, we had a little discussion on uh, one of our most recent episodes about, you know, what Miami needs to use the transfer portal for, um, I think you use it for depth and for shoring up a couple of weaknesses, but it's not like how you build your team. Like you're not using the transfer portal to say, hey, this is what's going to make us a dynasty again in Miami. The real work of laying that foundation has to be done through high school recruiting. So listen, 
I can have a short-term concern at defensive tackle because outside of Leonard Taylor, who also there are some question marks there because Taylor, you know, didn't exactly put it all together last year. He was very good when he was on the field. There are definitely depth concerns right now at defensive tackle, but that's also the position. You want to talk about 2024 recruiting? Miami, they are working their butts off. Jason Taylor, Big Joe, Mario Cristobal are working their butts off to make Miami an attractive destination for five-star, four-star, blue-chip defensive linemen. You know, we've seen Miami now strongly trending for five-star Justin Scott out of Chicago. Miami's been putting the work in on David Stone. Uh, Miami's favored right now for T.A. Cunningham. Like, some of the best defensive linemen in the class of 2024, Miami is very much in the mix, if not favored, to land a lot of these guys. But still, at the same time, uh, you know, I, I want the Hurricanes to be as good as they possibly can in the 2023 season, so you need to plug some of those holes in the transfer portal. Uh, Kiwi Rose, uh, I think, can help you with that out of Louisiana Tech. Now, same thing when we were talking about the receivers. Uh, I would like Miami to land both if possible. You know, They've got enough scholarships. They've got, I think, five or six available right now. Uh, if you can land Rose and Tywone Malone, I wouldn't complain about that. And listen, again, You've got to play the long game with some of these guys because they are going to take into the month of May to make their decisions. They don't have to make their decision at the end of April. Um, and let's not forget Miami. They did okay. They did okay in the winter window. I thought they could have done better at wide receiver in the winter transfer portal window. But let's not forget in the winter window, Miami landed Matt Lee, who's a surefire starter at center. Uh, they landed JV on Cohen, who's surefire starter at left guard. Francisco Mauingoa, who looks like a starter at Mar Mike Linebacker and a darn good one. Devontae Brown, who looks like probably going to be a starter at corner for Miami. Uh, then you've gotten some depth options as well. Terry Roberts, depth in the defensive backfield. Branson Dean and Thomas Gore, depth at defensive tackle. So Miami did pretty well in the winter window. I'm going to be patient and let this spring window unfold because, again, there's a misconception out there. A lot of people think, well, Transfer Portal opened April 15th closes April 30th yeah today's the last day to get in but it's not the last day to get out <laughs> you can be in the portal for the next few months uh so there is still some time to work on and hopefully close the deal with some of these players man I want to say congratulations to the newest pro canes and I want to answer some of your questions on the other side I want to open it up to Q&A uh on Twitter and for our subtext subscribers guys we have so much fun on our show's official SMS texting service through subtext. I send you guys scoops. I send you guys show previews. I drop some Dono balls in there from time to time, and I do one-on-ones with you guys. Uh, if you want to join our show's official SMS texting group, I'm going to include a link in the show description below. You'll find that in the description, whether you watch us on YouTube or you listen to us on an audio platform. If you go to the show description below, you're going to find the link to sign up to our subtext service. It's also a way to help support the show because people sometimes ask me like, hey, you know, do you ever drop like your Venmo or your, your cash tag if I want to donate? Because like donations is a big thing for YouTubers. That's not how we do it here. I don't want to ask you guys for something without extra value in return. So you get that extra value of scoops, breakdowns, uh, recruiting news and info on subtext. And if you want to help the show with $4.99 a month, you can do that through the subtext. And here's the thing. If you guys sign up to our subtext chat today, you get 14 days free. So you got nothing to lose there. 14 days, you decide, do I like it? Is this not worth it? You can opt out then. Uh, at the end of those 14 days and not pay a single cent, or you can get in for $4.99 a month. Uh, so check it out. I, th I think it's worth a shot because we have a lot of fun in there on the subtext chat. So we'll congratulate the new Pro Canes. Take some of your questions when we come back. Keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts, available free on YouTube. So new Pro Canes. Um, I expected two guys to get drafted yesterday. Miami got three well, over the last two days, I should say, because one of them went on Friday night. Huge congrats to Tyreek Stevenson, round two to the Chicago Bears. Two is where I expected him to go, and I think he found a good home in Chicago. Congratulations to Will Mallory, the tight end. I, I thought he was going to be a six-round pick. I was kind of hoping he would fall to the Miami Dolphins, I'm not going to lie, but 
I'm happy for him. He went into the fifth round to the Indianapolis Colts, and I think that could be a good fit for him. Uh, and then the surprise, uh, it was a pleasant surprise. I didn't think this young man would get drafted, but he did. DJ Ivy, round seven to the Cincinnati Bengals. Congratulations, DJ. And huge props to Jamila Dye, Miami's defensive backs coach. He gets both of his DBs drafted. He went two for two in this one. Tyreek and DJ Ivy both getting drafted. And I think in total, because uh, remember, Adai was at Georgia and uh, and West Virginia in recent years. I think he had six guys that he recruited were all drafted. So that that's really good for Coach Adai. I'm happy for him. Uh, we've got some undrafted free agents as well. Linebacker Caleb Johnson got picked up by the Jets. Lou Headley, <laughs> my guy, big Lou. I'm so happy for him, man. Lou Headley is a New Orleans Saint. Uh He's going to end up being their punter or punting somewhere in the NFL. That dude is way too good, way too hardworking, and way too tough not to be an NFL punter. So, Lou, make the most of that opportunity, my friend. We are all rooting for you. Uh, Mitch, the, the Miami Dolphins picked up a couple. Mitch Agude signs with the Dolphins as an undrafted free agent, and DJ Scaife lands with the Dolphins as well. So I, I love it when my hometown pro football team – gives an opportunity to players from my alma mater. So congratulations to everybody. And if anybody else, I apologize if I've missed anyone, because if someone else has trickled in uh, in the recent hours that may have also landed somewhere as a UDFA, you guys let me know in the comments below if I forgot about anybody. All right, let's take some questions. This one is from Todd B, who says, Hey, Dono, is it possible we don't sign any more from the transfer portal? If so, what is your biggest fear of our team's ability to win this year with no more additions? Not win at all, but a strong, successful season. Well, Todd, if Miami doesn't land anybody in the spring portal window, um, I think that means they swing and miss on several targets because they're, they're still actively trying to add players. So if Miami doesn't add anybody else, I'm going to take that as an L, okay? So I guess my biggest fear would be if the Hurricanes don't make additions, I would have a fear of just a lack of interior defensive line depth. Uh, I would have a fear of just not enough explosiveness on offense. That's why I wanted to add a guy like Xavier Henderson for his game-breaking speed. You know, at wide receiver, I, I think Miami, I, I feel good about the way Kevin Beard is coaching these guys up, and I was pretty impressed with Miami's receivers in spring football. So, I think Miami has enough quality receivers to move the chains pretty consistently. I just don't know if they have enough guys to blow the top off a of defense consistency, uh, consistently, I should say. That's what I worry about, right? Like someone like Ray Ray Joseph has that type of top end speed and explosiveness, but I don't know how much he's ready to do as a true freshman. So like you guys remember, for those who follow the NFL, which is probably most of you, you remember how the Miami Dolphins offense looked last season, you know, during that period when Tua was healthy and everything was clicking. Um, that's what I want. Like, I want to have an offense where you've got multiple weapons who can blow the top off a of defense, right? If it's not Tyreek Hill, it's Jalen Waddell and Raheem Mostert. And I, I like the uh, the Dolphins drafting Devon A-Chain. I think he's going to add another guy with explosive speed. Like, I want the Hurricanes to be in more of a situation like that where you've got – three or four just track star threats who can blow the freaking top off a of defense. That's what I want, okay? Uh, you, Paul, asks, what can we expect in May with it being a quiet period? Like recruiting events leading up to OV City in June, he says. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've come to find out, and we've been doing this show for just over a year. We recently had our one-year anniversary on Locked on Canes, you guys knew that. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I had people congratulating me on one year. I'm like, it's been a year. I'm not sentimental, folks. I'm always, I'm looking forward. I never look back. I'm not, you know, obviously like with my wife, I'll be in huge trouble if I don't celebrate the anniversaries, but I'm not big on my own birthday. I'm not big on work anniversaries, but there is something I have learned in doing this show for just over a year. I don't really think there's ever a slow month. And I remember last May, we were rocking and rolling on Locked on Canes. So here's the thing. It's still going to be busy with transfers, right? Because as I've mentioned multiple times, even though the, the deadline to enter the portal is today, there's going to be Miami targets who don't make their decisions until 
uh, until I the yeah, until May. So the deadline is today. There's going to be guys who make their decisions in May. So good or bad, you're either going to get good news or bad news on transfer portal targets in the month of May. And like I recall last May was when Miami landed Colby Young in the portal, which was a pretty big one. Um, I think May was also the month that Emery Williams committed to Miami. I think Riley Williams, the tight end, might have committed as well in May last year. So you may have some recruits trickle in with announcements this month, some transfer portal guys. And yeah, you talk about official visit season. A lot of those official visits that Miami is going to host in June and July are going to be scheduled in May. So we will be on high alert for so many of these players. Uh, I don't think May is going to be a quiet month at all. There's no quiet months on Locked on Canes ever, but I appreciate the question. Uh, this one from Chalupa Batman, our dude. He says, how many Canes do you think are going to be drafted next year? Well, I guarantee you one thing. Next year is going to be a busier NFL draft for the Hurricanes than this year was. There's no question about that in my mind. Um, and listen, some of these guys are underclassmen that I'm going to name. So this assumes they decide to take that next step. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. But if Cam Kinchins decides he wants to go to the NFL, he could be a first-round pick easily next year. Uh, James Williams, depending on how he plays this year, he'll be draft eligible. He could potentially be a first or second round pick. Akeem Mesidor, I think is going to be a high draft pick next year. Um, Leonard Taylor, depending on how this season goes for him, he could be a first or a second day pick. Zion Nelson could very well get drafted if he has a healthy season this year. And Tyler Van Dyke, depending on how this season goes for him, TVD could enter the draft. He doesn't have to enter the draft next year. He technically has... Uh, Two years of eligibility left, including this year. But that's someone we could definitely watch for if Tyler. Because remember, heading into last year, people thought TVD might be a first-round pick. And, you know, he's got an offense, again, that's more favorable to what he does, unlike the uh, the Josh Gaddis special last year. Tyler Van Dyke has a bounce-back year. He could very well be drafted as well. So right there, you guys let me know if I left anybody out. But right there, I could look at six guys who could be drafted next season. So I think it's going to be a much busier NFL draft. Uh, we get this question from David T, who says, hey, I've got a question. Out of all the heralded Miami freshmen that will get playing time this coming season, which one is most likely to garner freshman All-American status? I hate it that you asked me which one and not which ones, because, man, it's like it's like a virtual tie for me between Francis Mauangoa, who I think will start at right tackle, and Ruben Hurricane Bain, who is going to get a ton of playing time on Miami's D-line. You could make a strong argument for both. If Francis CC does end up starting, he's just going to be solid, and I don't know how many true freshmen around uh, the country are going to be starting as an offensive tackle. I think that's going to be a somewhat rare thing next year, so... I could see CC making first team all freshmen and then Bain. I mean, even if he doesn't necessarily start this coming season, he's going to get on the field a lot. He's going to be super disruptive. He's going to collect big time sacks and obviously sacks get everybody's attention. So I could see him potentially getting on. So I don't know. Maybe if I have to go with one being more likely than the other, I'd probably go with uh, with CC just because I, I expect him to hold down a starting job all year long, which is that's going to take notice for the people who make those all American selections, freshman all American. They're saying, well, this guy started 12 games at right tackle and he had this many pancakes and he gave up this few sacks and pressures. So I don't know, just maybe for that reason, he might be the guy who's slightly more likely, but I, I could make a strong argument for at least two. All right, my friends, it's been a fun Sunday episode. As I mentioned for the everydayers, we got a busy week coming up. Been reaching out to a couple of uh, of Miami's uh, class of 2024 verbal commits who hopefully can can hop in this week. We'll be talking a lot of recruiting, a lot of transfer portal. And folks, again, do not stress. Can we meditate together? Mm, we will be okay. Mm, I don't know if we will, but I think we will. Don't stress about it too much, guys, because still a lot of uh, Miami's transfer portal targets are going to take at least the next few days. We'll see how this goes. We'll talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.